Boleh dengar ke? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Itu. Uh, Zana. Boleh, bro. Okay, sound check. Uh, PowerPoint. Okay, semua okay. Alright. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. Warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat sejahtera and hello everyone. Welcome to this webinar series um, brought to you from my home studio here, as you can see at the back. Uh, brought to you by Center for Development of Academic Excellence, University of Science Malaysia, CDAE. And uh, for your information, we have uh, we have started uh, a new series of webinars and online workshop from today, um, this week, this week, the next few weeks. Um, hopefully, we will have regular webinars every week uh, in our effort to to help our lecturers to get up and running prepare for our new semester to get online uh, shifting from our face to face because it seems that we have to do more um, online almost fully online uh, in this new semesters depending on how the situations um, unfold so um, we will start today uh, on this topic effective digital content creation for online course I just finished about two and a half two and a half our session this morning with uh, UPM. I think some of you probably have joined the session this morning and uh, I hope I still have the energy to go uh, through this session. So um, the the PowerPoint slides that you will see that I'll be sharing, um, the, uh, I think I have about, um, I can't remember, about 100 slides or more. To share don't worry i have a lot of uh, graphics and uh, i will share the link to download at the end of this presentation and not only you will uh, download this powerpoint presentation there are a few other resources that i want to share with you uh, let me show you okay i've i've just created this uh, page this website this morning because i realized um, we always receive same question again and again and uh, i realized that when we we need our so-called one stop resource center so so that we can uh, we can put we can collect and curate all the relevant resources to help our lecturers with uh, content creation with uh, everything related to teaching and learning uh, related to how to prepare for online teaching, how to deal, uh, how to use different tools to create content, how to use this, how to use that, how to use Microsoft Team, how to set up this, uh, you know, WebEx, how to create video, how to edit video, how to create podcast, how to, uh, so you can see here uh, on, on the left hand side here, the menu, uh, screencast, video production, video editing, tips for teaching online, using Microsoft team, using WebEx, selected YouTube channel, productivity tools, making graphics, DIY studio, how to set up your own DIY studio, like the one that I have here, creating presentation, podcast, online whiteboard, WhatsApp for teaching, using WhatsApp or Telegram for teaching, learning engagement, um, how to create uh, learning engagement or student engagement um, and many other resources. Okay, so this is still work in progress. Uh, I probably will take, uh, you know, some time to really make it very, very comprehensive. As it is, it's already very comprehensive. Okay, um, so this is a living document. Once you, uh, I'll give you the link to access this one at the end also, at the end of this presentation. And uh, I hope you can bookmark this on your laptop, on your browser, so that you can access to it anytime. Another, uh, another uh, module that I want to share with you, which I've shared before, because a lot of, uh, when we talk about creating content, uh, the first thing that comes to our mind to prepare a video, to create a video, edit a video, how to shoot the video, all these things. 
everything about the uh, so-called DIY instructional video, you can find on this module. I think over, over time, I have developed this module and become more and more comprehensive and very useful. As you can see here, you can learn, you know, uh, different types of how, what are the different format or different types of video, devices for recording, application to create video, editing video, using video in class, setting up home studio, and other resources that I share on this module. So I'll give you the link to this module also at the end of this presentation. Some of you probably might have, might have been, uh, probably have been using this uh, for some time. So those are the resources sharing, including the PowerPoint that I'm going to share today, okay? All right, um, so once again, welcome to you. Uh, welcome to everyone who just joined this. Uh, I believe uh, we have mainly our participants from USM, but we open this also to other universities as well. So let's see how many uh, will be joining. Anyway, these are the things that I'm going to cover the essential aspect, three impo important aspect here. I'll be talking about um, the, the content itself, how do we create original content? And probably you have come across the term curate. So it's either when it come to content, there are two ways of doing this. One, you can create your own original content or we can curate con existing content that uh, that is available on the internet, created and produced by other people. So we curate means one of the one of the one of the um, one of the activities in content curation is by by you know searching for the right information, putting them together, compile them, uh, then validate the information, check the accuracy of the data. A lot of steps involved. Uh, I will I'll, I'll be touching a little bit on curation because this is very important twenty uh, first century skill that all educators must have and must learn how to use, how to do content creation properly. The second part I want to talk about, uh, because the title is about effective digital content. What does it mean by effective? Okay, anyone can create any, any digital content, but how do we get the students to use it effectively? Okay, we have to think from the student side. How do we get the students use any digital content that we create? or curate in a very effective way so that they can learn uh, from that content. Then some approaches to content production. So these are the three aspects. Okay, um, let me start with giving some you know, overview, uh, the, the what and the why of content creation. As usual, uh, that's how I approach my, always my, my presentation. Um, Okay, is if we if we see uh, you know in terms of how much content is there on the internet, there are huge amount, exabyte of information uh, available in various formats, in various digital format, uh, most available for free that we can download. So the amount, according to the, the fact here, the amount the amount of available web based content is doubling every nine months. Can you imagine that? So so much if. Okay, if you look at, um, you know, you can go, you can go to the website. Uh, what's happening in one minute, in sixty seconds, in terms of how much data, how much information is being generated every sixty second, every one minute. For example, you know, when uh, if we look at Instagram, uh, in one minute, fifty thousand posts being posted in Instagram. YouTube, which is one of my favorite place to go, uh, users watch 4.5 million videos in one minute. Can you, can you, can you imagine uh, among those videos that they watch could be your own video, your own teaching video, okay? So, um, and you can see other, um, other types of uh, information providers or source, sources of information. For example, Google in one minute, 4.5 million search in one minute, searching for information, okay? So this just give, just to give you some idea of the magnitude of uh, how much information out there. And um, we, on our side, uh, probably
personal uh, learning as well as for our chain. And the reason why there's so much information out there being generated every minute uh, because the technology, we have very powerful technology where we can, we have uh, thousands of uh, software and application um, in, in the, you know, that we can use, for example, uh, using the smartphone. There are thousands of smartphone application that we can use to generate content. Just by taking a picture and upload to Facebook or upload to uh, YouTube or to, to, to you know, uh, any platform. That's already content that we produce and we generate. So, uh, and also the students. And the, the student can access content easily using uh, their phone or their tablet. Um, so the, the technology actually open the, a lot of uh, opportunities for people to generate content as well as using content. And if you look at the platform, how and where these contents are being, are being used, you can see here the statistic as, as of January 2020, the world's more social platform. And we need to know this because uh, if you want to generate content and you want to reach out uh, the right target group, so you want to know where you should upload your content. If your need, if your intention is to uh, make your content available far and wide, as wide as possible and reaching out, uh, you know, every corner of the world. So as you can see here, Facebook, YouTube, WhatsApp, FB messengers, WeChat, Instagram, and some other application that probably some uh, are not familiar uh, to us. Um, Twitter here, Twitter is, you know, also one of the uh, more popular. But these are top three you can see here, Facebook and YouTube and WhatsApp as well. And in terms of the online activities, just to get some ideas of um, in terms of content consumption, how do people, how much time, for example, people uh, watch uh, the video, people consume content, okay? Uh, so for example here, 90% of the content, uh, people watch online videos. Uh, so meaning that majority, 90% of the content, uh, how people consume content is in the form of video. And therefore, that will give us some ideas of if you want to generate content and you want to reach out uh, your target group as far as possible, as much as possible, then videos would be one of the more popular format. Uh, vlogs, video blogs, yeah? video blogs. Nowadays, if you go to YouTube, uh, some bloggers actually earn their living by doing video blogs. Okay? Uh, instead of write written blog, but they use video to blog. Yeah? And uh, listen to music streaming services, 70%. Listen to online radio station and listen to podcast. Podcast is actually a recorded audio and is increasingly becoming very popular. And uh, as you can see later, um, it's very easy nowadays to create podcasts using free applications such as Anchor. So if you are not into video, because some people are quite reluctant and maybe um, not having the, the right tools and also skill. Uh, so you are not keen to create content in the form of video. You can also consider to create content in the form of audio. Okay. The choice is yours, uh, whether you want to do it or not. That's the only thing. Yeah. So now, why do we want to create digital content? Why do we want to create original digital content? Let me put it that way. So now let me ask you, um, are you a content consumer or content creator? Which one are you? Both or mainly consumer or mainly creator? I hope uh, all of us here can say that we are doing both. We are cons consumer as well as we are creating original content and we give back uh, to the world. And But majority is... Uh, I think among educators, they are just consuming the content for the purpose of uh, their own uh, their own uh, knowledge, as well as maybe to help them uh, prepare for their course uh, in teaching. And but very few start um, very few actually create original content and share with the world on different plat various platforms. I think now we need to 
change the, the mindset. Uh, I think we need to give back and start to create good content um, for uh, our students as well as we can share with the world. This is a blog article that you can um, you can read. Why you should be a creator and not just a consumer. Basically, this article uh, tries to convince us uh, to join the bandwagon uh, with other content creators and start to create content uh, in various format. Uh, not just video, it could be audio, it could be in the form of writing blog articles, it could be sharing your PowerPoint. Uh, there are many different ways we can uh, create content and share the content. Okay, uh, This is actually one of the great opportunities uh, in the digital era now because um, not only everyone can fly nowadays, but now we cannot fly because of COVID, <laughs> but everyone can create uh, content. Okay, uh, Very great opportunity. So why create digital content? One of the reasons because... Uh, as in the in the context of teaching, you know, because uh, we create content for our students, uh, we want to empower learners to assemble their own personal learning ecologies to support their individual learning pathways. Nowadays, students will have a lot of options. They don't depend on our own content. Well, maybe they will still ask us the, the notes, the PowerPoint, and so on, because they want to make sure that uh, they know exactly what uh, what material we cover. Uh, for them to prepare and for them to focus uh, for the exam. But actually, they, they have many options. They can get similar content, um, even much better than we can provide. So we allow the students, we empower the students, we give them the freedom uh, to choose from the best content out there um, from, the, from the internet. So much so, uh, the student can create their own personal learning ecosystem or personal learning uh, ecologies. So um, when we talk about content, um, basically nowadays I think um, the digital content is the way to go uh, because we can deliver digital content in many uh, platforms, easy to share, easy to consume, easy to store, uh, easy to carry anywhere you can, you can have uh, terabyte of information in just one small pen drive nowadays. So um, digital content uh, is, is uh, the way to go. And students learn best by acquiring information that is relevant to them uh, just in time, you know, at the right moment based on the current context. So that power, the power behind the digital content. Okay. And uh, there's a survey or studies done by McGraw Hill Education uh, six reasons why students prefer digital content, and therefore uh, we must provide you know good digital content for our students, apart from the, those that they can get from the internet. So, for example, you can see here, um, eighty-one percent of students say digital content technology is helping them to boost their grades. You know, eighty-four percent students say digital digital content will enhance knowledge. So, these are some of the findings, but. Um, in, in summary, uh, students use digital content for their own uh, learning and also to support uh, their learning and they can build their own um, uh, digital, digital learning uh, ecologies. Okay, now, um, how do we know or what are the criteria of good content? Okay. Because if we create original good uh, content uh, that uh, people will uh, get maximum benefit from it. But um, uh, yeah, so, so good content can be highly effective. So if we want to create content and invest our time to create uh, content, it must be uh, compelling and, and uh, excellence uh, quality so that it will benefit the users. So these are... Um, small joke here <laughs> this is actually the passion on the operating uh, uh, bed and he asked the doctor before you start the operation tell me which university get your degree from and doctor says from youtube well this just uh, this goes to show that uh, everyone learn 
just about anything from YouTube because on YouTube, we, we know that there are a lot of good content. Yeah, there's a lot of good content. For example, here we have uh, this girl here, uh, learn uh, you know how to uh, how to do all these uh, dental procedures and, and so on from YouTube and later on provide the service until she got caught. Yeah? And uh, the story of how Julius Yego, I think the silver the silver medalist in uh, in javelin in uh, on in Rio Olympic, and how he learned from YouTube the technique of uh, you know javelin, and good enough for him to won the silver medalist I think in the Olympic. And uh, these are some of the good uh, channel I would say some of the popular channel in YouTube uh, educational channel. Uh, for example, here I don't know whether you know this channel Crash Course. Uh, I, I'm one of the big fan of this channel. Uh, if you want to see uh, the example of good content or excellent, outstanding content in the form of video, check out this channel, Crash Course. Uh, Crash Course provide actually a video on basically on science. Uh, but uh, this this guy here, uh, Hank, his name is Hank. The way he produced the content, the, the quality is outstanding. And uh, those who are teaching science, especially in school or high school, uh, they can the teach, teachers can simply use this content to uh, help them uh, to teach their course. And the students can go to this YouTube in Crash Course channel and learn on their own. Uh, they can learn on their own uh, or they can use the, con the video in Crash Course YouTube channel uh, to, um, to learn, to, to enforce their understanding or uh, to learn more about the topic uh, without the, teach the teacher's, uh, you know, uh, teacher's uh, uh, assistance. So if you want to see example of good video content, uh, check out, uh, for example, in, in Crash Course uh, YouTube channel. Yeah. Okay, let me uh, just uh, pause a little bit uh, before I proceed. Uh, if you can uh, respond to this uh, question here, uh, in your mind, what are the criteria, criteria of effective digital content? What make a digital content? For example, when you watch a video on YouTube, uh, some will really, you, you learn a lot from it, uh, some are you will share with you know uh, your students or you share on social media platform because you think the the content of the uh, the, the content is is uh, wonderful is very useful so what are the criteria of effective digital content uh, you can uh, quickly go to this link and uh, share uh, with me uh, uh, what are some of the criteria that you you think would be um, will make the digital the digital content uh, effective. Yeah. So that's the link, and uh, let's wait for one minute, and we'll check uh, your response uh, shortly. Okay, let me just switch to the browser window here and see. Okay, so you can see some uh, responses here. Simple points, interactive. Yeah, that's good. Engaging and stimulating, definitely. Um, easy to understand, yes. Engaging, yes. Attractive, accessibility. Yeah, uh, accessibility, I think it's a good point there. Um, when we design any digital content, actually in US, it is a law to make sure that uh, your video or your any form of content, uh, for example, a video, you must have a subtitle uh, so that other people with uh, impact vision, um, you know, they can also, uh, you know, get uh, follow the content through some uh, tools. So uh, accessibility means uh, we want to be inclusive. 
so that any con any digital content that we create uh, would be accessible to everyone, uh, the normal kind of student as well as the you know the disabled people and others as well. Able to visualize and simple understanding, concise and clear, short keeps retention. Uh, cute, <laughs> cute lecturer. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> cute lecturer. Um, clean design, clear, precise, concise. Uh, meeting objective, size and the length of each creation. Immersive elements of game or competition. Uh, well, great. Thank you very much for your uh, for responding. Uh, let's let's look at uh, some others. Uh, some other uh, simple and catchy. Oh, the Tumas. <laughs> Immersive yeah, elements of game or competition. Yeah. Okay. Right. I think more uh, almost uh, all the points here are uh, relevant, and those are some of the criteria or characteristic that we we want to keep in mind when. We and especially a video, I mean, especially especially video, yeah. Uh, I'm not really sure about cute lecturer that probably have uh, some uh, influence, uh, so that people will stick and watch the whole video. Um, I would imagine the last. I think you can really uh, capture the the attention of the of the audience. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's go back. Yeah? Thank you very much for your uh, response. Now, when we talk about content. Um, um, this is something that we have to keep in mind. Yeah? Uh, some people say content is king. Uh, content is everything. Well, content is very important, but to me, it's not the only thing. So it's not necessarily the king or the queen. Uh, any good online course needs more than good content. So just keep that in mind. Content is only one of the elements of a good online course. Okay. But today we just focus on content. But how do we now, once we create the content, we want to make it effective, meaning that the students can use it effectively. That's the thing that my focus of my presentation here. Now, um, again, the same point I want to uh, reiterate here, when uh, it's not just content, but we have to also look at the bigger picture. We have to look at the whole course, uh, the whole learning, learning design of the course that we are uh, we are uh, designing or we are creating. So content is only one of the elements in the whole uh, learning design of the course. Okay. So, um, so we need a change of paradigm in, term, in terms of um, content. While content is, is important, uh, we, we should also uh, remember that the more important aspect is how that content drives learning. So when the students use content, they will learn something uh, and that would help them to achieve the learning outcome. So it must be, uh, we must go back and relate to the learning outcome of that course or of that lesson. So when we create content, always ask ourselves what actually they need to learn from this content. So moving from content-centric kind of mindset to learning-centric, yeah? Okay, there's a question just now. Uh, I don't know, maybe maybe from the from the activity just now. What what do you mean by eye pleasing? Well, uh, uh, from Arman, Aman, uh, some, someone asked the question. Just I saw. Well, eye pleasing means I think um, just like the slides that you are looking at now. Um, I guess the, the the visual elements, yeah, the visual element must be uh, in, in such a way that it will attract and capture the attention of our learner um, because uh, because of the distraction that we have nowadays, it's very challenging to create content uh, that really can capture and glue the student to the content. So the aspect of design, the aspect of visual design, visual element, all, all, the, all those are very important. So for example, you will not, you, you not probably, perhaps you notice my slides, I don't have much text, okay? Text is very minimum on the essential text, and I have a lot of graphics. And of course, we must make sure the graphics, uh, uh, you don't have any copyright issue with the graphic. 
So that is a different uh, part that you need to learn. All the graphics that I use here, the one that you see on the screen here, all, uh, I created common license or public domain, um, or from from the source that uh, USM has a license. For example, this one I even if it's taken, I take from Envato Elements. Eh? We have the license that you can request. Uh, you, you can request the con. You can request uh, from CDE to get the content for you. Okay. So when when we talk about uh, designing content, always relate to learning. What always ask yourself when you design, uh, when you create your video or any form of content, what would the students learn from that piece of content? It must be purposeful, purposeful content. So invest your time in designing purposeful and relevant content aligned to the specific learning outcome. It cannot be just short sendiri. Yeah? You cannot just, you know, uh, you think this is good, this is fun, this is, uh, looks wonderful. Uh, then you think the students would benefit from it, students will learn uh, from it, okay? So purposeful content, that's a, the, 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 one of the things that we have to bear in mind. So um, no content is an island, meaning that when we create, let's say, a video or a presentation or a PDF or an ebook, anything, any form of content, um, and then tell the students, okay, uh, watch this video. And that's it. You know, if they, you tell the student, okay, you watch this video before you come to the class tomorrow. And that's it. No, uh, you have to really uh, always combine high quality content with effective instructional strategies and contextualize the content to the bigger picture. Always remember, relate to the learning relate to the learning outcome that you want from that piece of content. That's the bottom line. So you have to uh, get the students to do something on the content. Engage them with the content by getting them to do some activities uh, or maybe ask them to ask uh, to answer questions based on that content or ask the students to come up with three questions based on the article that they read, based on the video that they watch, based on the audio podcast that they listen, uh, come up with three critical questions. Uh, this is one of the things that I do, uh, getting the student to come up with good, high quality, critical questions. Many things that you can do. Yeah, uh, this, this, These are some of, of the example. So remember, no content is an island. Always combine high quality content with effective instructional strategies. Dr. Lilis asks example. Yes, I will have some example later. Uh, how do we uh, build activities around the content? Yeah. Um, another thing is always pay attention to learner engagement and motivation. When we create the content, uh, always think about how would the students engage with the content. How would make them to go through the 10 minutes video or five minutes video? How do you, uh, you know, how do you engage the student to read one full article? So these are the things that uh, we need to understand and pay attention to when we design the content. This one example, Dr. Lilis, uh, well, this is actually a low level kind of uh, activities that we can, uh, the typical type of activities that we can do uh, in this case, uh, we have a video. Uh, then we get we ask the students to watch the video. This can be um, individual or group activity, and you tell them exactly, very clearly. The instruction must be very clear, and tell them also uh, watch this video. Uh, give them the exact time, uh, the duration of the video, so that they can decide at that particular point. Uh, whether they want to watch now or they can watch later. So it's good to put the, the duration there uh, to help the student to decide when they want to uh, do this activity. So when, when I say design activities around the content for cognitive engagement, uh, this can be a simple instruction or question that um, instruction that you ask the students to do. And then the students can, oops, the student can um, The student can post 
uh, the question or the answer to the uh, whatever that you, you ask them to do here. Yeah? This is actually a very simple way of uh, building or creating activities around content. Yeah. Now, um, another thing is um, leverage peer interaction and collaboration. This is one example when I, uh, what I mean by leverage peer interaction, getting students to work in a group. So here, uh, the instruction is, uh, this is a group activity. And again, uh, always give the duration, estimate of duration of the activity. And in this case, uh, this is the instruction for the learners, for the students, what they need to do. Uh, they have to Google if, uh, in this activity, uh, Google the information on what are the essential skills required to become an effective online facilitator, summarize the information into uh, seven habits of highly effective online facilitators in the space provided below. Okay, And this is a group activity. Then, um, depending on the platform that you are using, uh, there are many ways of creating the group. So this uh, we are using, I'm using open learning here as an example. So we create a different group. And of course, the teacher, the lecturer must be in all the groups so that you can go into the group and monitor their discussion. And, uh, in, you know, you can also uh, intervene if necessary. Discussion is not, uh, is not on the right track. Uh, so this is the example of group uh, activities where you give them uh, content in the form of video or in the form of uh, reading material and get them to work together in a group. Yeah. How do you do you? Uh, well, I saw a question just now. How do I estimate the the time for the activity? Right. Well, this from the experience, <laughs> from the experience, uh, I think you have to always, uh, always give extra. If you think the, um, if you yourself can complete the activity, let's say in 10 minutes, so you might want to give the extra, like, uh, you know, extra five minutes or make it 15 minutes. Uh, some, some people say that you have to multiply by three. So if you, if the, if you estimate minimum, you, 10 minutes, so you have to give, uh, you know, about 30 minutes. So, but I don't, I don't follow that rule uh, strictly because I, I don't think there's a such, uh, such a rigid rule, but give at least uh, additional, you know, five minutes uh, to the minimum time. Yeah? In this case, maybe uh, instead of 10 minutes, give them 15 minutes. Okay. Okay. Another thing about content, and I think I've mentioned this uh, many times, uh, because of the short concentration span, if you create content in the form of video, for example, uh, don't make the video too long because uh, just like a movie trailer, movie trailer is very short, you know, two or three minutes. So when you, you can chunk the lesson into a small chunk, uh, if it's a video, it could be probably, I would say, between five to ten minutes chunk. Uh, if you have a longer content, then you can uh, segment or you can uh, cut it into uh, two or three uh, segments. I would say between five to 10 minutes each uh, if it's a video. And the same thing if you create uh, in the form of uh, article, it could be a, you know, a short uh, article uh, for students uh, because I think that's how uh, students nowadays, uh, they, they prefer to, to have a short uh, chunk of lesson, which is more manageable and more digestible to them. Um, to address for the short concentration span. So this is what we call bite size. Uh, bite size uh, based on, on the micro learning concept, learning anything in small chunk, and that's the basic premise of bite size learning. It makes sense to break down content into small manageable segments. So I guess, um, you know, if you do uh, like um, um, podcast, audio podcast, the same thing. Uh, you know, we can make it into like five minutes uh, podcast. Then we have a series of podcasts, uh, each one, you know, between five to 10 minutes. And the same for video. 
and other form of content as well. Okay. Um, all this while, um, I talk about creating content, uh, meaning that we ourselves create content for our core, for our students. But uh, there's another way of how uh, we can create content. We can get the students to create content as part of the assignment or as part of their activities. This is what we call user-generated content. And we can empower the students to generate uh, content, uh, enable students to remix content and apply what they learn in a digital medium. There are many free tools available. Um, you, for example, blog, you know, uh, you can ask the students uh, after they we have completed one topic uh, in the class. So let them to summarize the topic. Let's say one in the form of mind map. That is the most popular one. And the one that I always use also, I ask them to summarize one whole big topic in one mind map. But another way, uh, we can also ask them to reflect on uh, what they have really learned and how they can, uh, you know, how they contextualize what they have learned in a bigger uh, picture uh, in actual application. So they can do that reflection in the form of blog article. So that's another way. But uh, the bottom line here is we empower the student to use all the digital tools available uh, to create their own content. Imagine if you have 100 students in the class, each one create one content in many format. Let's say, you know, some will use ebook, some will use blog, some will create video to summarize what they have learned. Um, or maybe you can get the, the students also to 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 create a, a website, for example. There are many ways of getting the students to construct their learning through this means. Yeah. Then. Um, Another important aspect is uh, when we put our content on on the platform, it could be in our own uh, learning management system, our own LMS, like our Moodle, uh, our eLearn, or it could be your video on YouTube, or it could be your slide in SlideShare. All these platform have some form of analytics. And uh, analytics would give you information as to how your content are being used, who are using it, who are viewing, who are downloading your content, from where they come from, how long they spend time to watch the video. All these are part of the analytics. And this can be very, very useful because it can tell us how effective is our content. Uh, for example, if there are thousands of downloads thousands of people download your PowerPoint. So it, it could mean that, you know, that your PowerPoint is, is good. That's the reason why people download. Whether they use it or not, that's a different matter. But that's one indication, uh, one piece of information that will tell you, oh, this particular video is very important. Uh, it's very popular. So maybe I can create more. Uh, or maybe I can improve on this and I can create a series of video around this topic. So track and analyze the the analytics yeah very important so for example here my my um my video here on my youtube oh <laughs> okay i reveal something unintentionally uh, <laughs> uh, by the way uh, i monetize some of the video on my on my uh, on my youtube channel so you can see here that's the income <laughs> uh, yeah uh, uh, okay, you can see here uh, for this. So this one of the popular video uh, during the during the lockdown, uh, sometime in March I think or April, I upload this video Webex how to conduct online class, and at that point when I capture the screen, uh, actual all all statistic, all analytics, I get around thirty k thirty k views uh, within. Uh, in the last 48 hours, 170. I, I, I can't remember. I said this one since, yeah, since March 2020. Yeah, since March 2020, almost 30K view. And watch time, 2,000 minutes. An additional 123 subscribers 
uh, subscribe uh, to my channel because of this video. Okay, so and it can, I can see also the the, uh, the top ten videos and there are more details uh, statistic here. I'm just making one example here, and these are very important. For example, I want to know uh, from which country uh, the the users or the viewers come from, so I can I can slice the information in you know in more and more detail, and this will give me ideas of how do I strategize in term in the form of in you know, in terms of what kind of content I want to produce more. Uh, in the future. So these are some of the best practices for teaching with digital content. Okay, uh, this I take from Dr. Tim Clark here. Develop a learning community, have an instructional purpose, remember, uh, start with a purpose, uh, then create your content based on the specific learning outcome that you want to achieve. Preview all content, scaffold understanding, plan for interaction, uh, remember, no digital content is an island, so you must uh, design or build some form of activities based on that particular content. Incorporate digital age skill, consider lesson design, utilize a variety of content, uh, meaning that not only just video uh, in your course, you know, you can have audio, you can have PDF file, you can have uh, PowerPoint slide, you can have interactive image, interactive content. Uh, I'm going to show you the, the, the different types of content uh, shortly. Personalized learning experiences and encourage you multiple devices, meaning that your content can be can be accessed through, you know, using the smartphone, using the laptop, using the tablet, and still look good on any screen size. Now, let's say you have created your content. Where do you put your content now in order for the content to be accessible by people around the world? Okay. And it's good to put your content on div various different platforms because you want to get visibility and also to get a feedback. Okay. So, for example, here, uh, I'm very proud to say that uh, this channel is by our own. Uh, student, undergraduate student, uh, here, uh, Isaac, I think, Isaac, 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 yeah, um, Mudahnya Fizik, you can check his channel uh, online, our student from School of Fizik, anak Prof Zube sebenarnya, uh, in the Fizik, and he has created this video now, I think his subscriber is probably uh, more than 11,000, uh, I have only close to 5,000 subscribers now. He has, what, 12,000 or maybe more now, I think. And um, he actually created a physic, teaching physics uh, on YouTube channel. And his students, uh, not only from Malaysia, but his students actually more from Indonesia, according to uh, Izzat. He has more from Indonesia because he teach using, teaches using Bahasa uh, Malaysia. Eh? So, and he has started his video, uh, his YouTube channel, and earning, I think, quite a good uh, income to support his, uh, you know, uh, monthly expenses, okay? Um, so, you can see here, he's using a tablet where he can write while explaining and record the screen uh, using a tablet. And nowadays, you can buy, you can buy, you know, you can invest around 100 or 200 ringgit you can buy good tablet from Shopee and you can create something like this uh, easily. Uh, this is another uh, channel, Mr. Chua Kiman here from UMS. And this is one of the channels that I want to strongly recommend you to subscribe because he created a lot of good tutorial to help lecturers, to help teachers to prepare, to create content uh, for their online course. So this is one example of creators, YouTube channel, uh, creators, YouTubers that create content and benefit people all over the world. Yeah. And I'm sure you want to be also contribute, uh, you know, your content for people to use around the world. This is uh, teachers, uh, for a teacher, a Malaysian teacher, uh, one of the guru uh, guru, apa ni, YouTube guru, 
Chigromi uh, here, and he produced a lot of uh, video for school teachers as well as for students. Yeah, and they have a, you know they have established their name and the YouTube channel to share their content. These are the platform that uh, he that you know we can choose. There are many other platform, of course, apart from YouTube. And of course, this is my own uh, YouTube channel. And I hope all of you listening to this uh, session today uh, will start to create your own channel properly, you know, uh, with a proper banner, and then start to create your content. It doesn't have to be, you know, um, you don't have to wait until you, you think that, you know, you are great, you, you, you have all the expertise. Uh, there's no time that is the right time. Share whatever little knowledge that you have. Create one minute video, two minutes video, uh, and share whatever that you think would benefit people. People would want to, you know, listen to the video, watch the video, and learn something. Uh, get one or two lesson from your uh, video. So, uh, urge is my uh, my uh, uh, kind of uh, my advice to of you. Uh, to start creating content and share your YouTube channel, create your YouTube channel and start to uh, share with others. Okay, um, this is, uh, I'm, I'm talking about platform where you can share as well as where you can find content. Okay, Merlot, yeah, Merlot is one of the uh, already, already, uh, available for a long time and one of the one-stop center where you can find educational content uh, that you teachers can use uh, for for their courses as well as uh, you know in higher education so you can find millions of content in in Merlot, yeah very very popular so uh, check this out okay let's look at the content itself what are the different types of digital content? Now, if you look at this uh, slide here, um, video is only one of the format of content, digital content that we can produce. But there are um, other type, for example, presentation slide. That, could, that is also a type of content. So we can create our slide using PowerPoint, or using Google Slide or using Keynotes. And then, uh, rather than just keeping it, uh, you know, within our uh, e-learn, why not, you know, put it on SlideShare or other platform and share with the Maksud world? Still dengan orang tu exchange dengan anak dia kan? Okay, uh, I think... Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, please unmute the, sorry, mute the microphone, uh, otherwise we will hear everything. Okay, uh, Okay. Uh, then image or infographic. Infographic is increasingly popular nowadays, so we can create image easily or infographic now using uh, application like Canva uh, or Pictograph. There are many ways of uh, creating original graphic. And once we have created that, why not we can share you know, we can share on, on our blog, on, on our, um, uh, uh, let's say, if we have a website like Flickr, yeah? Flickr, where you can share your photos and, and so on and make it available. You can put a Creative Commons license or public domain so that people can use it freely uh, without, uh, you know, without worrying about the copyright. Uh, photos, image can be in the form of photos, cartoon, you can use apps. Uh, on the smartphone, you can produce cartoons, uh, interactive graphics, infographics, interactive graphics by using an application like Genially. Um, in fact, I think um, Canva also can, can produce inter interactive graphics to some extent. Uh, infographic, in Canva also you can produce uh, infographic, Genially, another application you can use animation by using Powtoon, by using uh, Biteable. These are many applications that you can use to produce uh, image and infographic. Documents in the form of text file, PDF, ebook. Uh, I think Dr. Emma recently, I think Dr. Emma is in this uh, session. Uh, 
she she is supposed to conduct a workshop. I think she will conduct a few workshops for for CDE on behalf of CDE. Uh, maybe I can show an example. If Dr. Emma is here, maybe later on you can show an example of your flip book uh, using using application called Any Flips, yeah, uh, to create a nice uh, ebook or flip book. Uh, so uh, the idea is we want to we want to create a variety of uh, variety of content, not only just video, not only just uh, PowerPoint. But also the PDF, also audio, podcast. Podcast is increasingly important now and very easy to produce, and you can produce very fast. Um, I will show example of uh, podcast by our UITM lecturer, Doctor Apni, Doctor Zai Bunisa, where she produced a series of podcasts for her course, so the student can access on uh, Spotify, you know, on their on their phone. Uh, listen to the to the lectures using the audio podcast. So these are example of a multiple format that we can uh, we can produce, and each one of these we can learn one or two tools uh, application to produce. Yeah. Actually, uh, if you look at this article, uh, you can Google this article later. Twenty two types of content you can use in e learning. Twenty two types. <laughs> okay. So, um, of course, you don't have to go for 22 types. You know, you can just, let's say, you know, five or six different types of content, video, uh, you can do infographic, you can do PowerPoint presentation, you can do audio podcast, you can do interactive uh, graphic, five types. I think that would be good enough. But what are these 22 types? So check this article, check out this article, and, uh, you know, you can explore further. Yeah. So if I put this in the category, uh, these are some of the categories of content. Each one of these, probably you can learn one or two application to produce video, to edit video, uh, one or two application to create podcast, one or two application to create ebook or interactive ebook, article, uh, webinar, uh, learn, learn how to use uh, Microsoft Teams and WebEx, Learn all the features uh, that give give you the power uh, to do a lot of things with Microsoft Teams. There are a lot of things you can do actually. Uh, now you can do breakout room things like that. Webex, for example, you know, uh, go deeper and learn the features how to do different things. Blog. Just now I give example of using a blog uh, platform like Medium. Uh, ask the student to create their own blog because blogging to me is very very powerful um, because writing is a powerful way of of training our brain to articulate our ideas into a, into into writing okay if you don't want to write a long blog then you go for micro blogging micro blogging for example you can use tumblr as a as a micro blogging but micro blogging means you just write one or two sentences. That's good enough. Yeah. So, for example, the students can reflect and summarize each lesson using micro blog platform like Tumblr. So they, you know, and they can share the link with other students. And uh, now all the students can have access to each other's blog, and they can learn from each other. Free guidebook or white paper, image or infographic, presentation, diagram or chart. These are the different types of content that we can create. Uh, if you if you learn let's let's say two application in each category, so you will end up with how many? Uh, Eighteen application in your toolbox. That's good enough. Okay, that's good enough, and you can do a lot of things. So, how do we produce content? How do we generate content? Okay, there are five ways to generate content you can create the original content which is what we want to encourage you can curate content what's the meaning of curate content uh, i will explain you can blend content into coherent lesson meaning that you put a different lesson a video a powerpoint 
uh, a graphic, an article, put them together in the right sequence to, and everything become one complete lesson by blending content from different places, from different sources. Okay, uh, we have uh, application like uh, blend space, yeah, uh, test, TES, test blend space, where it allows us to blend the different type of content, different format of content into one coherent lesson. User generated content is what um, just now I mentioned about empower the students to generate their own content or repurpose content. It means that we take content from uh, other places. There's no audio. I saw a uh, miss uh, in the chat just now, no audio. C can you all still listen to me? Can you hear me? My audio okay? Dengar, Prof. Dengar, Prof. Okay. Oh, dengar, ya? Tadi nampak. Okay. Tadi nampak ada kata tak boleh dengar, ya? All right. So, repurpose content. Repurpose content, it means that we, we take the content in the original form, then we can modify, we can add on, and we uh, it will, it will uh, turn into something slightly different. Uh, I will show you the example uh, shortly, okay? So these are the five different ways to generate content. So let's look at the, how do we create original content, yeah? Now, this is uh, where we want to start to become a content creator. Let's join me to create original content, yeah? Um, of course, um, the copyright issue is something that people always worry, but don't worry, all this copyright issue can be addressed. And one of the popular type of content is video, like Salman Khan, Salman from, uh, Salman Khan from Khan Academy. He is, uh, he, he is advocating, he's a strong advocate of using video for teaching and learning. So this one, one of his TED talk, yeah? maybe if you have not come across this, or maybe you want to go to YouTube or to TED talk website and listen to his presentation, let's use video to reinvent education. Yeah? And there's another article here, how Khan Academy is changing the rules of education. Uh, Khan Academy is very, very popular. They, they, are, um, they, are, um, they are a platform that produce video content on, they started with mathematics, but now they have expand, they, they are spending into different subject matters and they make it available for free. Yeah. And basically they use video to deliver their content. So um, this is the link. Uh, I'm going. I'm giving the link also at the end of this video of this uh, presentation. There's a link to this uh, to this module, and uh, if you if you want to start to learn how to create video content, if you don't have much uh, skill or experience, uh, don't look any further. Just <laughs> refer to here the IFI instructional video. I have designed it, and I think I have put all the relevant information that you need. Uh, from the hardware to the to the software, uh, how to set up your own uh, home studio, everything that you need. How to, what are the software that you can use to edit the video? How to shoot a video using your smartphone? Using everything that you need to know. Okay, for the IY instructional video. Um, and okay, another way of creating quickly to create video. Uh, just like what, what I'm doing now. Uh, I'm doing a live streaming or a webinar, online webinar like this one, and at the same time, record the session. So, of course, the session would be like today, is about almost two hours. Uh, then we can upload to YouTube. But you will have like one hour or two hours recorded session on, on YouTube. Of course, people can watch, they can jump from you know, at, at any point in the video. But remember, I, I mentioned about repurpose, repurpose the content. So what I can do here from that one hour or two hours um, recorded session, I can now 
open the video in the video editing uh, software and I can watch the video again. Then I can cut the video into small segment. Remember, we want to chunk the lesson into small uh, short duration, short uh, video, like five minutes or 10 minutes. So now from that one hour video or two hours video, I probably will end up like with 10 segments or 20 segments of short videos. And then I can uh, upload this uh, on, on my blog or on, again, I can upload to YouTube. I can add some more information. I can add a annotation. Uh, and, and this will be more useful because uh, the, the user or the, the, the learner can go straight into that particular piece or that particular segment that they are interested in. That's the meaning of repurposing content. Okay. And I would say that I want to encourage everyone to start doing webinar or live streaming, uh, maybe just with your students or with a small group of people, because it's a quick way of generating content, a quick and you know uh, easy way to create content. Uh, you can repurpose uh, into smaller chunk of content. If you do a recording uh, by yourself in your own room, for example, you start press record and start talking to the computer, the feeling is different. The experience is different. You feel more kind of more stiff, not very natural. Now, like what I'm doing now, although I don't see you, but I know you are listening. Uh, some of you are really, you know, watching uh, or looking at the screen. Some of you probably doing something on in different windows while listening to me, but it's okay. But I know the people are there. The people are there. So it still feel quite natural. And I can talk freely. Uh, um, just like I'm doing a presentation, you know, face to face. So I can, this is how we can create content. Um, of course, when you do the editing, when you break into small segment, uh, this is a time where I can remove the part where, uh, you know, I, I talk rubbish or I, I you know, I, I cough or I say, mm, uh, so that you can remove this video look very efficient and uh, very focused. Yeah. And um, okay, this is another thing that you can do to create content. You become the host. Yeah, you become the host. Then you invite, let's say, uh, some experts in your in your in your subject. And this expert can come from industry. And this is the beauty and the power of online nowadays. You can create uh, you can create content easily by inviting expert in your uh, discipline in your subject matter. You can uh, you can uh, conduct the interview or the conversation. Then after that, it become content. Then later on, you can cut into short segment. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, the next thing maybe uh, from doing live webinar or live streaming, uh, some of you probably not feeling comfortable or ready to do that. So another way of creating content uh, is by recording your video. And to record a video, you need the application. So remember, all the application that you need, uh, I have provided here, the one-stop resource center here, which the link I will give you shortly. So everything that you need, I have given the resources in the form of video. I have, I have um, uh, basically choose, chosen the best video on YouTube. I have watched the video myself and I have chosen only the select, the best one. The one that I choose for you here, example, okay, uh, how to use Microsoft Team, yeah, for example. So you can find here, there are a lot of YouTube video that on different aspect of using Microsoft Team that I have chosen for you here. Okay, so um, how the tools? Don't worry about the tool because uh, in this session I'm not going to teach you step by step how to use a different tool. I'm just giving you some ideas. Uh, the type of application that, that you can use. Um, if you want to record your video on your computer and you don't want to spend uh, your money to buy or to subscribe any application, uh, 
uh, this is one of the one of the perhaps most powerful application to do uh, screen recording and not only screen recording you can use this OBS studio available for Windows and Mac uh, to do live streaming and to do recording as well and they can do wonderful thing yeah but OBS yeah, studio is not easy to learn okay it's not easy to learn uh, there's a learning curve but if you're passion enough you can hunt the, the, the power of uh, this software and you can create wonderful uh, video uh, on, on, on your uh, recording on your computer okay for Mac users and this is what I'm using um, I, I'm, uh, if you want to do live streaming or you want to record your screen as well uh, you can eCam live yeah eCam live uh, it's not free uh, you, you have to buy license uh, annual license I think a few hundred ringgit but it's, it's uh, to me is a uh, worthy uh, worth uh, worthwhile uh, investment uh, I use this a lot to do live streaming as well as uh, creating uh, doing uh, screen recording using eCam live uh, just now I show the picture here uh, this is my live streaming using eCam live yeah so I can use a green screen as you can see here I can change the background and I can uh, uh, bring in the slides image everything uh, easily uh, one man show kind of production uh, using this application called eCam live but you can do the same on PC or on Mac by the application you OBS studio and um, this application uh, streaming art is becoming very popular now uh, you can do the free version uh, the free version is actually very generous allow you to do more things you can do live streaming uh, using this you can uh, live streaming to YouTube or to Facebook you can show your PowerPoint and at the same time you can record the session okay so StreamYard is uh, very 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 easy to use to set up so I will encourage you to explore this if you have not um, used this one before start to do a live streaming interview and, and so on using this application you can create a screen recording uh, on your own computer now this very easy to use uh, for example you can have a PowerPoint here and then you have your webcam okay uh, yeah StreamYard is free uh, and with, stream, with free StreamYard you can get access to a lot of features but if you want to have more of course you can pay yeah you can pay uh, the, the license which is also very reasonable um, what you are seeing on the screen now is example of screen recording or screencast and we can create easily using free application like uh, screencast or matic loom l o o m loom pro and now we have we have, we have panopto now uh, we can use uh, well many ways of creating screencast again if you refer to this one stop resource center here under screencast i have a lot of resources for you just go through all these resources you will you you get all the information to get started how to create a screencast okay everything is here i have done the the hard work for you uh, to save you time just use this uh, resource center yeah uh, again i'm using this screen this is actually a screen recording but i'm using my ecam live just now uh, I can do fancy thing actually using eCam Live, uh, but you don't have to be, you have to do, you don't have to do fancy fancy things. You know, just a simple one like this would do. But if you are ambitious, you can use just now OBS to create fancy uh, screen recording uh, like what you see on the screen here. Uh, even more, even more complicated, even more advanced, you can do using the OBS Studio just now. Uh, provided you are willing to learn <laughs> you are willing to learn yeah but 
Uh, I, I've given you some tutorial here on OBS. Uh, let's see, here. Uh, where is it? On this resource center, OBS. You will find here somewhere how to use OBS. Uh, okay, all right. Um, of course, you can come to my YouTube channel here. You will find a lot of tutorials, um, how to do things, how to do this, how to do that. Uh, you can just come to YouTube channel here, my ch my YouTube channel here, and find uh, some uh, relevant tutorial. But otherwise, this is a place, a uh, resource center here, where you can get everything that you want on this page. Yeah? Okay. Um, okay, another type of content. Why not? I'm sure over the years, you have created hundreds of PowerPoint presentation. Why not create your account in SlideShare? Create account in SlideShare and upload your uh, slides on the SlideShare. Make sure you have addressed all the copyright issue. Yeah. Um, I my PowerPoint on SlideShare has been downloaded. I think the last time I checked, eighty thousand download, eighty thousand download from. Uh, I don't know, uh, more than 60 countries or more, maybe now more, because I checked this perhaps uh, two years ago, the last time I checked. I don't bother to check now this. <laughs> but uh, I know that my PowerPoint has reached out learners from all over the world, yeah, from all over the world. Okay, That's, those are create content. What about curate? What is what's the meaning of curate content? Curation, content curation. and Content curation at the very basic level is to create a playlist. You know, you, you compile music by, comp uh, you know, using a music playlist on, on YouTube, for example, sorry, on, on, uh, on uh, Spotify, for example. Um, YouTube playlist. I'm not sure whether you know how to create a playlist, video playlist on YouTube, uh, but I have hundreds of playlists on YouTube on different subjects uh, or so-called learning playlist. Curation is basically basically creating a learning playlist, meaning that we can group similar type of content under similar topic together, so that uh, you know we can uh, we can uh, put in a convenient category that we can share with everyone, not only for us but we can share with our students and with everyone. And one of the perhaps uh, there are not many uh, good tools available. Last time we have Storyfy, we have uh, but some more that discontinue, but now we have Wakelet. I hope Wakelet, I hope Wakelet will uh, will uh, you know um, stay forever, will live together uh, forever. Um, and Wakelet is the way how you can curate content where you can save, organize, and put all your content in one place. Yeah, it's like one stop center also. And you can also ask your student as part of the assignment, let, give them the topic and ask them to curate content using Wakelet. And this is my Wakelet. Yeah, this is my example of my Wakelet. Uh, once you sign up for Wakelet, it's just a matter of clicking this uh, plus sign to create a new collection. And you define the topic. You define the topic and then start collecting the content in the form of video, in the form of uh, website article, in the form of anything, any form of content, slide, dan sebagainya, uh, in your in your wakelet. Yeah. Uh, this example uh, inside you know, uh, the wakelet, the, all the topics uh, I have now eighty plus topics, uh, which reflect my interest. Uh, you can see here. Eight items, eleven items, fifteen items. This item can be a video from YouTube. It can be a slide from SlideShare. It can be article from blog, uh, from blog uh, or website. It can be a PDF. It can be an ebook. Anything we can put together in one page. Yeah. We can also use a uh, application like Pinterest. Uh, this is my own Pinterest here. Uh, on different topics, yeah. This actually, especially, very good for visual learners, because uh, Pinterest is very visual, a lot of uh, kind of graphics, 
graphical way of putting stuff or content together. And um, this is an example of uh, content that uh, in the form of ebook. I think this one is ebook. Uh, so uh, create playlist and learn to curate content. Uh, the the skill of content curation. Uh, I'm not going to go very detail, but this is the 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 art. So the the important skill that we need to learn. Uh, how do how how do we do how do we uh, how do we uh, do a proper content curation using the technique? Certain there are certain techniques of uh, to do a good content curation. Yeah. Uh, these are the steps, how to do content creation. I'm not going to go through this one. Uh, maybe I will I will do separate uh, separate session or separate webinar. Just focus on how to do each step in content curation so that you can become a master content curator. Yeah, A master content curator is someone who is uh, able to analyze content and select the best content, the highest quality content, and then to add value to that content and share with others. Yeah. Okay. Blending content into uh, into a coherent coherent lesson. How do we do this? Yeah. And this one application. Um, again, maybe we can do like one hour or two hours session. Uh, a short session, one hour. I think will will be enough. Uh, very specific to focus on the application. Yeah. Uh, we will we will do series of webinar in the future uh, focusing on one specific application today i'm just giving the overview yeah um, this application called test teach this the application where you can combine different type of content into um, into a coherent lesson this is called um, this this application is free so you can see here uh, the example that we can put the different content and put it in the proper sequence so that it makes sense. Uh, it can be a video, it can be you know a quiz, it can be a PDF file, it can be a website. All these uh, merge together to become a coherent lessons. Just ex go to test teach and explore. There are many sample lessons in there. So you can create a digital lesson in five minutes. Can you imagine that? User generated content. So this is where you get your students to create content. And this is one example of uh, my students' work. Uh, the story of tea. How does the humble tea leaf becomes a cup of golden tea? You see, when we give the, we empower the students to create content, you don't even have to tell them what kind of application or what kind of tools they can use. Give them the freedom. And you see the, the type of content that they produce here, even better. And sometimes I, I have to ask the student, okay, what kind of application you use? Uh, so I learn actually from them. I discover new tools and new application from my, from my students. So this is one, one example of interactive content that they produce. I think this one by using iPhone app. I can remember now the name of the app. And here you can see when I click the button here, uh, something will pop up. So this is an example of uh, interactive content. And this is a wonderful product from the assignment that I give to my students. Repurpose content. What, what does it mean by repurpose content? For example, here, uh, this is actually a long, like, how, how long? Uh, yeah, this example of um, hours presentation. Uh, I gave on this topic on micro credential. We record the whole session. Then what I did after that, I used the video editing software and I cut into a small chunk. In this case, from the two hours video into a small chunk of, you know, a five to 10 minutes video. Okay. So, and from here, um, I three things I want to make sure you understand. Okay. Then I repurpose the content. Uh, 
uh, okay, this is a video. Let me, I'm, I'm trying to go to the next. Okay, from this video, seven minutes video, I use another application to repurpose the content. Repurpose means I put it in different format. Um, this is suitable for Instagram, for example, in the square format. Then I add on the, uh, the cosmetic on the video. So as you can see here, from here to here. And this is a square format video, which is suitable. And I add subtitle also down there. There are three things I want to really make sure you understand and see in, the, in, the, in our context. So now when I create this into different format, uh, in this case, suitable for Instagram, then I can put on Instagram and on Facebook and on other social media. And that actually will attract uh, different groups of uh, learners or viewers. And then you can actually spread uh, the content into a wider audience, far and wide. That's the meaning of repurposing content. Yeah. We are three things out. Okay, another thing, um, creating content or repurpose content is using the application called TED Ad. Yeah, TED Ad. By using TED Ad, which is a free application, you can choose any video from YouTube or from any other platform. And then what you can do is uh, you can uh, create activities. Remember I said no, no, no content is an island. So you take one content here, one piece of content then you can create a series of activities around the content. So first, for example here, um, you get the students to watch the content first, and then you can design uh, a series of questions. When students click think, they will see a uh, you know, question based on that video, which you have created. Then after that, dig deeper, you get the students to go deeper into the content. You ask the students to read maybe one uh, good article which you have uh, chosen and then under discuss the students can you can ask the students uh, open ended questions to discuss uh, the article that they have read let me show you an example here um, oh i have close i have close the let me that Add. Yeah, this is the website, TED Ed, Lessons Worth Sharing. So let's say I try, I find uh, any uh, video on COVID. Okay, on COVID. So this one, for example, what is a coronavirus? So imagine this is a student and this is a video that you have chosen and you have designed uh, a series of activities around this video. So let's say now I, I watch the video, then after that uh, I click think, you can see here, when I click think, there are uh, 10 questions. So I will answer the questions, I have to log, okay. I will answer the question one by one until the final question here and this question actually are based on this video then i go to the next one dig deeper and this sb actually has been designed by the teacher or by the lecturer so in dig deeper here uh, we want the student to uh, read further more detail uh, into the topic so uh, give them the time to read and after that they will go to discuss and here we have designed three open-ended questions for the students to respond in order for them to, you know, to, to apply uh, more of what they have learned from the video and from the reading uh, that they have uh, done just now. So this is an example of uh, how we can repurpose content by using the existing content and add activities around the content. Okay. So. These are some of the, okay, um, maybe at this point, I probably look at some of the question here that you have posted. Okay. Um, okay, from Aline here. Can we know which tool that can bring out the subtitles while we record our videos? Oh, okay. There are, okay. 
um, there are many tools which we can use to add subtitles. Um, the easiest, if you upload your video to YouTube, YouTube has a feature to add the subtitle. So you can use uh, the subtitle feature in, in YouTube to add, yeah, to add the subtitle. In screencast omatic if you use screencast omatic to record the video, uh, not the free version, but the paid version, which is not expensive, uh, you can also add the subtitle uh, by using screencast omatic Well, there are many more, but um, uh, just, just know that there are many, applica many, many applications which allow us to do that, yeah? Okay. Um, Dr. Sufrail kata, yeah, I use subtitle edit for those recorded videos. Uh, but I think Dr. Sufrail use, Dr. Sufrail use Adobe, kan? Adobe Premiere. Uh, <laughs> Adobe Premiere is the heavyweight one, yeah? Um, but if you are interested, we can, we can conduct one session, yeah? Uh, on video editing. Uh, yes, I promise to do a few series of detail, focus on specific application, how to add subtitle, how to do this, how to do that. Today is basically an overview, yeah? Okay, how um, Wakelet, yeah, Harun Irina, Dr. Irina. Wakelet is amazing. Can, can already imagine what can be done. Oh, I'm not sure whether Dr. Irina have used, or maybe you just get, I just now, um, you, you just uh, been introduced to Wakelet. Yes. Uh, please explore Wakelet. Maybe I will have one session on Wakelet. Just specific on Wakelet, yeah? Banyak nak buat ni. Uh, nanti selepas ini kita akan fokus on specific application, yeah? Uh, so, man, bila apa nanti, you all join lah. Uh, sekarang ni just giving you the overview. Uh, Panopto, for example, soon kita akan buat satu webinar on Panopto, yeah? Uh, Panopto ni untuk kita buat screen recording dengan PowerPoint sekali. Very powerful. Okay, um, um, trying to look at for, I mean, any question here, yeah, StreamYard. Yes, Dr. Azida kata, subscribe to Pro StreamYard. You can get up to 10 people online together. It is around 220 ringgit per year. The thing with StreamYard, you can bring up to 10 people. Uh, this can be expert in your area and so on. You can uh, have a discussion and then you can record the whole session. Then at the same time, you can stream live, do live streaming to YouTube or to uh, Facebook as well, yeah? Okay, uh, why do you want to do live streaming against studio recording? Oh, the Dr. Lilis punya soalan. Between live streaming and recording. Uh, live streaming, you can get a real-time interaction with the students or with the, with the viewers then you feel natural because I, I, can, I know that people are listening, although I don't see them. So that make, um, you know, I, I like to do this more naturally rather than looking at the camera and talking to the computer. It still feel very different. You know, you don't feel natural. Ideas doesn't flow <laughs> easily or naturally. So that's why I, I, I like to do webinar like this because uh, I can reach out to a lot of people. And then I can, uh, people can ask questions in real time like what we are doing now. Um, okay, what software would you suggest to do the video editing, segmenting, and chunking video? Okay, we will have one webinar session on this one. But meanwhile, uh, the resource center here, which uh, the link will be given shortly. Uh, under video editing, you will find many software can that can do that, and mainly free software. Yeah. Okay, Kim Kimberly. Oh, this question from Dr. Kim. Uh, how are you, Dr. Kim? Oh, you send this to private. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, Dr. Taufik, the tips power, repurpose, yes, repurpose content, yeah. All right, so maybe I just continue for, I think we have what, uh, about 20 minutes more. Uh, let me talk a little bit about tools, tools of the trade. Okay, um, 
check out this website yeah every year every year uh there's a uh, jin hat jin hat will compile the top 200 tools for learning i have not seen the 2021 uh, maybe there is now but uh the, the last time i checked is top 200 tools for learning in 2019 check out this website okay so for example here uh I capture here the top 10 first, you know, YouTube, Google search, PowerPoint, Twitter, and so on. So from here, you will get ideas. You know, you probably, you know, uh, never heard of some application because you don't explore. But if you see, oh, this is the top 10. Uh, so maybe, you know, you can start exploring this tool or reading about the tools and maybe start using it, okay? um yeah the latest one uh yeah dr alin shared oh, top tools for learning 2020 yeah, yeah? Ah, okay thank you very much dr alin uh so the 2021 so these are top 20 yeah? from 11 to 20 microsoft team in 2019 is number 11 so maybe now in 2020 maybe it's already up yeah so check out this list okay kahoot one not and so on right um there'll be plenty of tools but don't get overwhelmed with so many tools what you need to do if you go to this list that i have prepared for you here choose the tool that is most relevant with your purpose then stick to that tools put that as your tools in your main toolbox okay but of course from time to time try to explore more okay Okay, there's a question from Dr. Azamri. What's the best tool to make video something like this? The text or caption can change as you talk. Okay, ini soalan from Dr. Azamri. Dia bagi link. So let's see what kind of video. Just uh, the 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 caption can change as you, as you talk. Oh, that's uh, my name is Deborah Grace Regal, and I have been a professional. Oh, slow. Ini yang macam saya punya contoh tadi lah. Ya. Yeah. Uh, let's look at the example just now. Uh, back to here. Ah, yang ni ya. Eh. Yang ni yang saya punya. You can see, you can see the, title, the subtitle. Uh, as I speak. Really make sure you understand yeah. and see in the, in the you know, context how you can... Uh, jump on this bandwagon and join us together with PTJ. Okay, so itu maksud dia. The subtitle change as you speak. Ah, uh, Okay, nanti saya akan buat webinar. Uh, promise to do one webinar to show you how I do this. Tak susah pun. <laughs> susah ya? Very easy. Okay. Um, So choose a few tools and use them effectively. Uh, some of the free web-based tool. Actually, your phone is a powerful tool for content creation. So start with that. Yeah, your phone. There's some. Uh, I think kan, kalau kalau actually banyak smartphone application, you can start creating content just by using the smartphone application aja. Uh, for example, untuk video editing, yeah, Dr. Emma guna. Uh, kind master uh, which is very very powerful eh? uh, ah, I was about Dr. Emma saya tak ingat ada slide rupanya so ini Dr. Emma buat gunakan oops gunakan uh, kind master punya apa ni application uh, apa ni on on uh, on the phone yeah? on iOS ada on Android pun ada lambat ya yeah. hmm. can play the video inside here oh this is a link ya yeah. so check out uh, the Toto Emma's video here let's see whether I can play the video uh, seems very slow Assalamualaikum and hi yeah. selamat datang ke Emma Zone and Finance Channel di mana saya akan mengubah topik-topik berkenaan dengan finance dan ekonomi Okay. Um, 
the video on YouTube, usually when I do a webinar, it, it's very slow. So, but anyway, uh, what, what I'm trying to say here is Dr. Dr. Emma create this type of, I would say, commendable quality video, uh, semi-pro, I would say, by using only her phone and the kind master application. Um, Dr. Emma ada ke dalam ni? Kalau, ya, Dr. Emma memang uh, recently ada buat satu workshop untuk YSM staff. Uh, bagaimana menggunakan kind master dan juga uh, smartphone eh, dengan Dr. Dian eh. Dr. Dr. Dian uh, me, me, apa ni, conduct this workshop so uh, kalau ada lagi workshop ni nanti mungkin dia boleh buat secara online ataupun face to face datanglah ya, untuk belajar but again uh, I have one section in the resource center here under video editing where you will find video editing video editing where you'll find apa ni, uh, some tutorial of how to create video using the smartphone yeah video editing uh, mana dia? video production sorry video production under video production yeah video production using smartphone Uh, saya akan saya akan tambah lagi some resources here uh, tak sempat ini baru buat tak siap lagi still work in progress ada banyak lagi saya akan tambah uh, dalam senarai ini ya okay um, now rethink your content strategy not just content development uh, well this about uh, you know when we create content for our students uh, keep in mind that some of them actually uh, are not having good internet connection so create a low bandwidth version of your course use micro learning concept chunk the content into small chunk consider if necessary only audio using podcast yeah because some students maybe they are not able to watch a video so maybe create a podcast uh, audio only yeah? or text only course um so yeah uh, i want to show one sample here by doktor apa ni Dr. from PPIP tu doktor lupa nama dia um, tengok nama dia kalau dia hanya google dia gunakan google form to create a very nice uh, lesson this is a very creative way uh, yang ni ah uh, uh, doktor low low ke low hui min ya yeah, doktor low ah uh, doktor low i know doktor low is here <laughs> I don't ask your permission to, to share this. Uh, she is she use actually Google Form here. Very creative. Kaidah mengajar murid masalah pertemuan bahasa. So nama pelajar, nombor matrix, introduction, arahan. Then uh, the video, her video on YouTube. Let's see whether can play. And okay. Dr. Low, if you are watching, uh, I want to give you this, you know, uh, this commendable so effort. Yeah, very creative, very creative. They embed the video di dalam Google Form and then use the Google Form actually to design and deliver the whole lesson. So next, activity. Okay, lepas tengok video, ada activity. I never thought of this way of presenting content. So this again, you know, uh, learning from other people as well. And I will use this example to show how just by using Google Form, which is in your Google Drive, uh, you can be very creative and mix, put the content in such a way that it become a cohesive, coherent lesson. Okay, uh, okay, uh, uh, a short activity. Then the student put the answer here. Then, okay, another, another content here and another video. The video is also well done activity then uh, exercise another content some some information presenting the content and well this is excellent example of creativity not using state of the art kind of application free application in the google drive yeah never thought of it and i learned from her okay so keep it simple 
no need to be very complicated. Short, keep it light. Because uh, at the end of the day, you want to add cognitive overload. Okay, how much time? Oh, okay. Okay, let me just uh, quickly, because I want to allow some more, some question here. Prioritizing content to develop, um, you know, choose what kind of content uh, that you want to develop into a digital content format. Uh, prioritize importance and urgency, yeah. Uh, I have mentioned this one. I just go through now very quickly to the end. Yeah, this is just some demo of uh, micro lesson podcast. Yes, uh, I have a few video on podcast, and I this um, if you create a podcast, go check out Anchor. Very, very easy, free. Uh, you just sign up and start creating your podcast. Write a script, practice, rehearse. Um, you know, when you read the script, it sounds very natural. So if you have a nice voice, go for podcast. Okay. And I can see, uh, since I introduced this one, I can see a few lecturers, uh, including uh, my friend, Dr. Azhar, Dr. Azhar is doing a nice podcast. He shared this on his Facebook. Uh, so this is an example of my podcast here. I don't know, yeah. Why students forget and what you can do about it? <clears throat> this is a very interesting topic and also very important, especially for educators. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. Very, very easy to, cre to create uh, as long as you have written the script. Uh, all you need is good microphone. Uh, you can do this podcast on the phone or on your computer. Um, I, I really want to encourage everyone to start doing podcasts apart from creating video and so on because you, it's a very quick and fast quick and easy way to create content for your students. Um, maybe I have an example of, yeah, this is my podcast. Uh, this is how the web dashboard looks like, you know, and you can get some analytics as well. And you can even monetize. Uh, I don't, I have not yet monetized my podcast. And you can see how many people uh, listen to your podcast and uh, the, the how much you can, you have reached uh, the audience, audience size and, and so on. Very, very useful information. So you can share the link to your student and uh, click here, Facebook. Your content can go to Facebook easily, okay? And uh, I have my clinic here from UITM, Dr. Zaibunisa here. Uh, since she discovered uh, podcast, she started to create podcast, a series of short lessons for her course. Uh, this is actually on food packaging, uh, new, uh, sorry, on food product development here. and. The podcast will be uh, syndicated to other platform as well, in this case, Spotify. So can you imagine now the student use Spotify app on their phone and they can listen to lesson, do each lesson here while waiting for the bus or when they are, you know, uh, doing, not doing something, uh, they can listen to this. So there is learning on the go, mobile learning in the real sense, yeah? And this is a nice, a beautiful thumbnail as well. Uh, so... The tool is there for to, to and uh, okay, all this uh, I think I just run through the video, everything how to compress your video, uh, um, how to transcribe your video, uh, the application called author.ai. Uh, you can transcribe your your video uh, from uh, let's say you have a, a video ten minutes uh, on YouTube or your own you, your own video. You can turn that video into a text by using this application to get a full transcription. Uh, my YouTube channel, uh, I'm not trying to brag here, but I just want to give you the motivation and inspiration why you must have YouTube channel. Uh, this statistic is not updated. Uh, probably now it's more than this. Uh, I have reached out uh, to... 700,000, this when, 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 when I checked the, the statistic, uh, views from, you know, since 2009, when I started my channel, 30,000 
hours of watch time and what 3.5k subscribers i want to to declare and disclose to you i have monetized some of the videos and uh, earn some <laughs> some money from this channel as well um okay I have uh, also created a lot of uh, online uh, course. So this is a form of uh, digital content. When you create online course, when you create your MOOC, yeah, or your micro credential, those are your digital content that you can open and make it available to the public. Okay, um, blogs. And the joy, last but not least, the joy of sharing your content online. You get feedback, you get positive feedback from people around the world. For example, here, you know, I get uh, this one uh, from uh, Vienna here, the consultant, uh, sent me a chocolate because he, he really liked the video on palm oil and he used the video for, for his uh, consultation. And then as a, as a token of appreciation, he sent me a chocolate. So I received a chocolate from Vienna. These are the things, the gift people give, uh, you know, from, from all over the world uh, to show appreciation for good content that you produce. And they find it very useful. This is uh, an email from a student from Ghana. Uh, he said, I must confess that your simple but perfect teaching methodology you use to explore the topic ranging from biology to oil technology has become in handy for me in my pursuit of becoming a great food scientist. You are not touching lives of our Malaysian students through your devoted teaching methods, but also the lives of students all over the globe. It's another one here. So, really, you know, want your teaching to be peer reviewed, which Normally, we, we don't do it. We do only for our research publication. But if you want your teaching content to be peer-reviewed, the best way to do it is by creating content and make it available on YouTube, make it available in your blog, make it available on the slide share, and those various other platforms out there. Um, finally, read, read, read. Right, 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 read, read, read. So these are some of my favorite websites where I learn a lot about e-learning, about all these tools that I share with you. How do I know? Because I always follow some website and one of my best favorite all time favorite is e-learning industry. My God, these are the gold mine. Gold mine. Yeah, the gold mine of everything that you want to learn about online learning or about e-learning, about tools of technology, about just about anything. You can find wonderful, fantastic content webinar that you can join. Uh, if you join the webinar and you 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 couldn't make it, they will make give you the link to download or to watch the recorded version of that webinar. Uh, free ebooks, free white papers, articles, ticks tips, tricks of the trade, just about anything that you want to learn. I cannot stress enough. And I'm giving you this website, e-learning industry, put it in your home screen on your phone, bookmark in your browser, visit the, subscribe to the alert uh, in your email. This is how I learn. This is for my professional growth that I always mention to people. Professional growth is by learning all these things. Yeah. Edutopia is another of my favorite website. Faculty Focus, oh, one of my top three uh, website where I learn a lot from this website. The Savvy, the Tech Savvy Educator website. Free technology for teachers. Uh, Brian here, Richard Brian here. Uh, you can find the links in my resource center here. You can find the link under uh, selected YTube channel. Yeah, selected YTube channel. Uh, Richard Bryan here. Here, yeah, Richard Bryan. So here is Richard Bryan. Richard, not Richard Bryan. Richard, I know Richard 
I don't know how to pronounce. Never mind. Uh, Larry Fezalo. Larry, Larry Fezalo. Also, uh, follow him. I follow him on, on Twitter. Wow, I get a lot of use, good, useful stuff from him and uh, Richard just now on Twitter. And finally, I would like to invite all of you to join this web, uh, sorry, on the, this Facebook, Global Community Content Creators and Live Streamers. Uh, because it's where I share a lot of resourceful uh, resources, um, good, useful resources. And I think we have also other people sharing a lot of useful stuff uh, here. Okay. Um, and finally, take home, take home point from this. I, I, I go through the Q&A. Become a content creator. Create unique and compelling content. Share whatever knowledge you have. Don't wait until you, you you say that, oh, I'm not an expert yet. I'm not very good in technology. No. Do it now. Just do it. Like he said, just do it and DIY. Do it now. There's no time that is the right time. Any time is the right time. Okay? But start small. Don't get yourself overwhelmed. Just why not start to create one minute video, talk about Anything that is relevant and useful for your student and put it on YouTube. Start to create your first content on your YouTube channel. A journey of 1,000 miles begins with a step. Practice, practice, practice. Practice makes better and better. Not perfect, but better. Leverage the experts and practitioners. Learn from the experts. Be humble enough to learn from other people. Establish your content platform. Uh, right on the momentum. Once you have the momentum, don't stop. And finally, don't stop learning and stay humble. Stay hungry, stay foolish, and stay strong from me. And that is the only slide that you want to take a picture now <laughs> so that you can get the link to download the PowerPoint here to go to the resource center just now uh, that I show you the resource center. There's a link. And it's the DIY instructional video, uh, which is the, the module to, to help you to create instructional video. Okay, have you taken the picture? Uh, I want to go to the, I want to check the question now. Or you can also unmute the microphone uh, if you want to ask questions. So let me see if I can pick up any questions here. Uh, and, well, if you want to unmute the microphone and ask directly, also can. Can, 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 can we get the link? Hello, uh, Prof Karim. Yes, yes, silakan. This is Madi Maran. <laughs> hey, from Monday, I saw your name. How are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine, fine, fine. From, I have a class on Monday. Uh, I'm going to do uh, online teaching using WebEx. Okay, I have about 50 students. How can I, uh, uh, is there any setting in WebEx so that I can see all the students at the same time when I'm teaching them? Hello? I think yeah, the bandwidth not. So maybe oh, you can turn off good. the video, maybe? Uh, just yeah, yeah, I'll turn off the video. Yeah, no. It's raining now. It's raining there? In I don't know. It's, it's, not, it's not raining here. It's not raining here. No, I just want to know because oh, okay. uh, when I'm talking to a student like in a face-to-face -face lecture, uh, I can see that they are talking to me and I, when, I, when I talk to them, I want them to look at me, okay, for example. So how can I do that <laughs> in WebEx? That's my question. You want them to look at you? Yeah, I want to see that uh, they you mean are there, eye contact? Not, not eye contact as well as physically they are there. Eh? Like like the way you are presenting now, uh, you are not sure whether I'm sitting here or not if I, if I turn off my video. So oh, yeah, they yeah. can do the same thing. They can turn it off and then go for a nap and then at the end of the lecture they can come back. But, uh, I, want to, uh, but I want to see them, I want to see their face. You know, when I talk to them, I want to see their face. How is it possible in WebEx? You you can't you can see all of them, um, especially if you have like say hundred students uh, in the in the group in the class. When you start presenting and sharing your screen, uh, you won't be able to see all of them. 
uh, probably you can depending on your setting the webex setting uh, uh, on your screen you probably can see like four or five students at one time then you have to scroll you can see you can there, there's a there's an arrow there where you can scroll yeah, yeah. Oh. so uh, there's no way you can see more than like i think five four or five depending on the setting and depending on the size of your screen as well if you are doing if you are using iMac for example the 20 yeah. inch kind of screen you can see mm. more but uh, unfortunately i think there's a limitation there um mm. we cannot see all the students oh, okay. at, at, you know in, especially if you are sharing a screen yeah yeah uh, okay okay thank you thank you so well, we have to live with that uh, with that, yeah, uh, that limitation. limitation okay understand okay, thank you thank uh, you another thing is another thing that we have to get used is to 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 look at this camera directly so now yeah. i'm looking at my webcam but yeah, i true. tend to forget because i look at my slides yeah. uh then uh, my eye my you know the my the the eyes is not actually directly Correct. contact with the webcam yeah yeah uh, so that's another another thing. Yeah, there's, there's no eye to eye contact. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's a limitation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you, Pramani. I have a question here about microphone. What brand of microphone that I'm using now? <laughs> okay. Um in 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 the in the module here, the DIY instructional video, yeah, you will find all the details about microphone. And the one that I'm using is called the type of microphone that i'm using now uh, i don't know uh, is it good um this is a semi pro microphone uh, a condenser type microphone connected to my usb um but this type of microphone now you can buy let, let me go to the uh, let me go to the uh, module now uh, under and uh, application uh, devices for recording yeah devices for recording uh, you can find one section on microphone devices for recording so you'll find everything here um, okay i go under microphone microphone webcam microphone here so can see here can you see the microphone um, with 40 ringgit investment you can buy this type of microphone you can use with your laptop with your phone camera with your phone with your tablet and you can get a very high quality uh, audio yeah or if you have uh, you want to invest around 300 ringgit you can even buy the wireless so that you are not uh, you know you can move uh freely and still can capture the audio very very clearly and the type of microphone that i'm using is called condenser microphone mine is quite expensive uh, but now with 100 ringgit around 100 ringgit you can buy this from shopee this particular model bm800 around 100 ringgit i think 120 ringgit you can buy from shopee together with the pop filter uh, and uh, you can get you can do a very uh you know you can record a very nice crisp audio without much noise yeah so again remember everything is in this module diy instructional video which uh, i've given the link just now yeah uh, yeah dr ong dr ing no ashira very clear yeah very clear in fact uh, people use this type of microphone also to do uh, a cover song you know uh, but i'm not going to 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 sing any song here but <laughs> the quality is 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 very good um okay do you have any more question you don't want to unmute the microphone uh, and otherwise i will try to pick up question from the chat from the chat here uh it's a long list long, i don't know which one is question which one is <laughs> All right. So um, uh, the best uh, recommend the best way to conduct lecture for 500 first year student. This one from Dr. Khatijah Aisha. Uh, for 500 students online, uh, yes, it can be very challenging to really engage them. Uh, 
in the this morning actually this morning with UPM I have demonstrated uh, some of the activities that you can use uh, to engage students um, so maybe I, I, I will conduct the same session here to to show you some examples uh, we have to create uh, group activities we have to create individual activities a lot of things 70 percent of the time that we have in the session should be based on activities rather than giving them content yeah uh, in this session for example basically i'm just uh basically just like normal uh class where i basically share and tell rather than show rather than engage you in the activities but uh uh the, the better way of doing it but is by uh having a series of activities designed for that one hour session or two hours session this morning actually i demonstrated this i have about seven activities or tasks uh every 10 or 15 minutes uh so maybe i will conduct uh, one session just for that to to demonstrate or give you some ideas of how you can do that with group with a big group of uh, students yeah but online actually is better than having 500 students in a face to face in terms of engaging students yeah is to me uh, there are many ways of doing that okay all right so it's already uh, 5 7 minutes past 5 so um if you have no more questions um i would like to stop here so once again uh, my final slide here if you have not captured please capture the screen now and please take some time to go through the resources here and feel free to share feel free to share far and wide with other lecturers with your clicks because that's what i want to do sharing to as many people as possible not confined to the participants here so with that thank you so much for your time i hope i have given the value uh, for your precious time being here uh, and i hope you have learned something and whatever that you have learned please please share with your clicks with your friends so with that thank you very much and have a nice weekend uh, and refresh for the next for for next week inshallah so i say sudahi dengan wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh bye bye semua